All right, howdy folks, and welcome to Always NES Awakening. Uh, this is stream number four, uh, converting Always Awakening to the NES. Um, so last time we had some success with importing items from GIMP, some of the background tiles, and we were using uh, NES screen tool to uh, convert things to CHR files and we had a bug that came up with the palettes but um, today I was thinking we would just work on bringing in uh, the files importing them in with GIMP now that we've got a process somewhat defined there and uh, maybe play around with tiled a little bit uh, because how we organize these tiles in the CHR or how we want to do it may be impacted by how the tile editor works. Um, so. Um, and Um, anyway, we uh planning to use Tiled as an editor, and I played around with it a little bit. Over the weekend, to kind of get familiar with it. Um, but it's pretty powerful. Uh, and... thinking about some of these tiles. So let's get some of our files open here. So um, normally with the NES, or very commonly, uh, things are thought of in uh, 16 by 16 meta tiles because that's the limitation of the attribute tables. But Always Awakening really plays more on the on an eight by eight tile. Um, there's not a lot of repeating. Well, so the only really place where we get into repeating tiles of eight by or sixteen by sixteen is in some of these bricks. But for these studs in the background. These pallets, uh, even even a lot of times with the bricks, everything's on an eight by eight. So unless we want to get rid of a bunch of the detail of all was awakening, things are going to be more of an eight by eight tile definition. So we're going to be able to cheat a little bit because we're only loading one screen at a time we can load the, the screen that we're scrolling into we can scroll to we can load into the other uh, name table so i want to try to think about this in a, in a way that's going to lend itself easily to compression uh, since we're effectively dealing with eight by eight 
uh, meta tiles, which is just a regular tile, so not much for meta tiles. Um, Let's see where the I want to take for a starting point. I lost my file or put it somewhere else. Yeah, it was this one. Okay. Um, and so one thing that, so tiled, looking into a little bit how it exports things, we can load up our tile set here. Um, but the NES tile set is really defined as four different colors. Um, and the which attribute table, which, which palette is being used, is information outside of the tile. So we need tiled to tell us not only which tile number is loaded up, but which we need the attribute data. Um, and so one idea that I had for handling that is using different tile sets uh, per palette. So combining things of a, of a similar, but we're going to have to have smaller tile sets to, to pull that off because the NES still only has 256 tiles visible at once. We can do bank switching. I haven't really decided on what options I'll give myself with the mapper, but I don't know how it's going to... I haven't fully fleshed out that idea, but we kind of need to know what tiles we're, we're working with. How many of, of each. And we have to think about our importing, but with our... The way we defined it previously... I think we'll be okay. And we can always break these up into smaller sections when it comes to to importing them. Okay. Anyway. So for Forsaken Valley, we've got um, four different, we've kind of got five different palettes, but the we never have the vines and want three different grays at once. So the brick palette is going to swap out with the, the green palette. Um, and then we have our gray, the wall palette. This is the gray that's always This one, has the shift to mostly brown, 
some gray and then always cyan Probably going to organize, well, let's just start converting some of the stuff over how we want to organize it. It's hard to decide when we don't know what we're actually looking at for a tile budget. Seems wrong. Wow. That's right. Is our grid off here? Oh. No, I don't think so. We just previously, when we loaded those, ladders didn't actually do it right. So as far as bricks go, we've got a, so one idea that I kind of had for uh, some cheap compression to some degree is some sort of RLE format, but it, if the tiles are organized in a way that they follow each other from a, a left to right pattern then you can instead of saying tile number you know two three two three two three you can say repeat this pattern to then th those the subsequent how many ever tiles so for like these bricks or these blocks and the other thing is is if we get really tight on our tile budget we can get some more breathing room by making finer bank switching of the back chr pattern tables so if we have chr ram with like a discrete mapper the background pattern table and the sprite pattern table you can only really bank switch them all out all 8k bytes at once uh, but if we have bank switching of 4k bytes with something like an mmc1 mapper we can change out the sprite tile set and the background but then there's also the ability to use CHR RAM, but constantly loading things in and out of RAM can be a hassle or may not have time for it. 
Um, or we can, so going with like an MMC1, you have the option for 2K byte and or 1K byte. So let's split our background table into half or into four, depending upon which. And FME7 splits the entirety of everything up into 1K bytes, which would give us four. But if I feel like I really need it, or want it, I can get fancy and even get finer than that if I'm making my own map or I don't really want to do that, but arranging things in a horizontal manner uh, gives us a help with the organization. So we don't actually need these center grays. And to some degree, we don't necessarily need all of these tiles. Maybe this one could be identical to this one here. These brown dots are just into this tile boundary. For now, I'm just going to do everything. And we can decide where to where to cut. when we need to. So this block is actually 16, which would have been a full row, but we saved three because these tiles are just standard gray, which one of each color I should probably have defined in a specific spot. But I'm not going to worry about that right now. If it's just one solid color, we'll leave it. So as far as the blocks go, we've got a starting stubby. Yeah, I'm in Shaku saying for all uh, target MMC3, and that's very likely. If I can, if I'm not far from um, a discrete mapper, I might try to stick with it, especially if I've got. Uh, 32 K bytes of CHR RAM. So that might help us out. That might be enough, but it's hard to speak intelligibly of my needs or desires, not knowing exactly how many tiles I want. So this one is very similar, but it's almost it's like a half one of the, on the starting edges. We also have so as for the start left edges and the right edges, we've got a similar one. But we could probably do away with these two tiles here because they're so similar. We'll just keep them for now. So there's a broken one. So in these areas,
the bricks are a different palette than the background the background and then the bricks moving into the green but see this isn't going to work we have this broken brick which uses brown although i guess it could work if this unused color ends up being brown also but We're not, our attribute tables are going to force us. Hmm. Can't necessarily get it into that palette because we want the different gray. It could be white. We don't necessarily need white because it's in the cyan for the top. But. Yeah, MC3 gives quite a bit of flexibility. It may very well be that for some of these things, my level of caring to be as close to the original as possible is gonna gonna change. But we'll stick with it for now. So are those all of the bricks that we have? I think so. So we got our bricks, got our ladder. Let's go ahead. It'll actually be, it'll probably be the brown palette. I'll just put it there for now. Oh, we have these bricks too. Yeah, this is desperately similar, but Tops. These two, and this one's different. That's 10 different tiles for what could easily be one, two, three, four, 
five, six. And I don't think we'd miss them. But try to be complete for the moment. Got these little fire spitting. For these ones that make sense, I think I'm going to arrange them like so. Missing my layer somehow. There. Got our NES palette down here somewhere. And Chuck is wondering if there's a problem with the stream. Yeah, it looks looks okay on my end. I'm curious if anybody else is having issues. myself it seems fine I bet your USB is doing okay too so maybe it's just you Ben Shaku I don't know Especially for these art sessions, I think I'm gonna have to figure out some sort of music situation. I don't know what all the rules are with Twitch. I'm guessing I can 
stream stuff. But then you guys probably don't necessarily want to listen to what I want to listen to. What's All is Awakening? So it's a it's a retro inspired game. Uh, it's it's inspired by NES games, but it's on it's on it started on Steam, released what was it two years ago, uh, and it's on Switch. And they just announced that it's releasing on other consoles as well. So it's a platforming. Retro NES inspired game, and we are converting it back to the NES. It was originally planned to be an NES game, um, and then Elden Pixels, the guys working on it, weren't able to continue that effort, so they just kept with being a A game for modern platforms. Trying to, there's a lot more different tiles here than I realized before. How far do I expect to get with this? I expect to get done with it. Uh, how long that'll take? Uh, I don't pretend to know. Um... Just gonna uh, just doing this for fun, and uh, we'll get there when we get there. Yeah, so I'm planning on streaming the whole process. Uh, if the the stream is kind of becoming a commitment device for me because um, if I had other I've got all kinds of other things going on, better things I should be doing with my time. But everything we do with our time can't always be the best thing that you do with your time. So coming on here and streaming every week gives me a good reason to do it and not feel guilty for working on something that's just for fun. Yeah, so the whole process is going to be here and then I I put them on I put the archive the the recordings I put on YouTube as well for I don't know. Some people watch them, maybe more people watch them in the future, I don't know, but it's also not a convenient time for other people to watch if they want to see things. So having that log on YouTube could be useful. So I'm trying to see if I've... But anyway, like I was saying with the music, whenever I put these on YouTube... I don't want to get flagged for how much do I know about the NES. Well, I, I do all kinds of hardware-wise. I know it pretty well. I develop circuit boards uh, that people use to publish their own homebrew games, and I've done a I've done a few small projects myself, um, but nothing to completion of this size so I did a pong game with the nerdy nights tutorials and I did a little why I guess I have multiple things selected that's why it's breaking it There. 
Uh, so I know I've got the skills. Uh, the question's just the time. And so this stream is streaming this as part of what's helping me justify the time. Um, I just keep finding bricks that I didn't know I didn't have. At some point, close enough. into like I don't know is this actually still part of the Forsaken Valley but I'm kind of considering it even if it's not or even if it is I don't think it is though but oh here's a little flag I think we're in Amber Sakellum or something so that I think we got most of our bricks And our wooden platforms. So we get into the drywall. I'm going to separate this to things that are passable and things that aren't, maybe. Well, it looks purpley when I copy paste over here, which is probably fine. Don't have to redo this, but. reasonably confident with what we did last time that we'll be able to sort it out. Got these. Shadowed pieces. And then we got some crackage. Nope. Why? Yeah, so asking if this is my CHR RAM. Well, it's our uh, it's our C it's our it's our tiles. It's our CHR either RAM or ROM, depending upon what mapper we go with. So right now, we in previous streams we kind of figured out a process of making it so that we can. Uh, copy paste the the raw assets that Elden Pixels guys provided me and making sure that we can get these into an NES format I think that's my problem. I accidentally select two things. No, yeah, I select two things and then it doesn't like it.
something about GIMP. There's got to be just a move tool. Move to move layers, selections, and other objects. These have hotkeys. Is it just M? Oh, now it moves the whole background. Oh, the move tool is selected. Oh, maybe it does. So I need the select tool the whole time. I'm just so we this may be loaded into CHR RAM or it'll be in the CHR ROM. It's mostly irrelevant at this point. Um, so these are all that makes up all the tiles. That we have available to us. And we're trying to figure out. how many we we have slash need slash want so trying to get figure out all the different tiles that are in use get them into some palettes and uh, or into into one tile set So I think that's all the drywall. If we go, oh, there's another little different type of crack. Yeah, and then you need it into the NES palette format. So what kind of so we've we've already defined our palettes that we want to use. Um, and we've got these separated to some degree in in which of the four palettes they're using. So the there's four palettes for the background available. And uh, we're using all of them. Some of the screens will change palettes between when scrolling between different screens because we have grays swapping into greens. At least that's my idea for right now. So once we have, oh, there's these crazy cracks. Using quite a few tiles for all these different types of cracks. I don't think we really need them, but so we're for now I have a feeling we're not gonna have them all anyway 
We've got some different ones, but they've got quite an assortment. We get into some of these inner areas. We have some house stuff going on here. Yeah, three colors plus black ground per per palette. Our background is looking to be black. Got, yeah, see, these are four different tiles here. This little window shutter thingy ding. You could easily compress that into one. Got a little stool there. Oh, this is another brick type. Or disappearable thing, I think. Every single one of these tiles looks unique. Kind of just going to say the heck with organizing these how I think I might want them. be easy enough to move around. I mostly just want to be able to see what everything is. We've got a little table looking thing here that's six tiles. in this bookcase I'm not seeing any repeated tiles there So I think that's all of that. So that covers all of our drywall and house interiors, probably. These look like they're repeated of those 12 tiles to just make them taller.
Microsoft Office junk running on my PC. Kill that guy. Okay, so... Just gonna look in some of these. Maybe they don't have the interior mapped out in these houses. I think they get you into those over there. Okay. Maybe we'll start getting into the dirt. So bricks. So the brick palette items, gray, gray and browns, are using up about half a pattern table. Yeah. Start working on our dirt. See what we've got going on. That I think that's three different palette or three different tiles there. Cause this one is that one. And then sometimes it just repeats itself and blends into this one. So I think that's just three tiles that are arranged nicely. Okay, then we've got Different to we don't actually get this many browns or do we? Yeah. Yeah, we've got four different browns. Or I'm sorry, three. Our brown palette is gonna have a dark brown, a brown, and a tan. This tile is different also. So thinking of things split into our four palette groups. Roughly we 
These things all need to be visible at once. So there's only so much we can do for bank switching, really. To some degree. Like some of those extra drywall cracks, you know, maybe we could have those visible when there's no dirt, but that's kind of just getting fancy. Uh, but the we don't need to see these inner drywall sections, the bookcase and stuff. So some of these things could switch out. We don't need to see dirt at the same time that we see bookcases. So that's one way to kind of think of of grouping these things is we have a base tile set that needs to be av available on nearly every screen and then some tiles that maybe don't need to be that we can swap out by doing some changes either probably won't be on CHR ROM but Probably be on RAM. But either way, these things need to be defined. These are all different. I think we need the top too. tiles on the right side than the left side. No, I think I just can't really Hard time believing I'm going to keep all this. Uh, maybe. All right. So that's our main dirt. got upside down dirt for now. Gosh, those tiles. <laughs> those are the same, but these, no. Uh, 
this one. This would do better in windowed view, so I don't have to go back and forth. Single window mode. Try that off. See how that does. Do I really need? Where? There it is. Two windows at once. Okay. the full square of the dirt here. So we need a bottom right corner. Oh, and this looks even different. It's like boulder dirt. I have a bottom right corner somewhere. Right there. Uh, lots of tiles. if I'm missing something but these two tiles are the same I don't know how intentional that was, but I'm not even sure I'm going to have as many as they have, but anyway. <clears throat> so I've got another kind of dirt to work with. This is also the same. What is this the next area? Hmm. 
I don't think so. I'm not going to worry about the boulder dirt right now. I forget that dude's name. Hiding behind the waterfall. So that's our main dirt. We got these blocks. Looks like all of these. This ladder, they got background blue behind that, like the drawbridge. That's not going to work here. So... For other brown stuff, got some small stuff, we got some trees, a little pebble. The sign, let's take this guy. Okay, so this, this little rock is not going to be able to be visible next to grass. And that's one drawback that's I think is going to cause problems in tiled is adhering to attribute limitations. You make some mistake in any a screen tool and you see it right away. Hey, that's not possible. But tiled is just so powerful of a tool gonna have a hard time ignoring it so this wooden pieces is black and two browns but have to be I'm 
We only have one brown in the brick palette. Probably just change the anyway. Any more tree things here? Oh, we've got the stars. Nope. What did I decide on that fencing? So the fence is gonna basically have to be cyan. Could have some fence that was gray. Like the bricks, gray and brown. But when there's grass growing on it, it'll have to be the green. Hmm. I didn't think about that. We'd actually get a gray. I think the gray is more important than the blue part of the fence. So we have two shades of gray on the fence. And then anytime we want green growing on it, those vines, they gotta just adhere to the attribute limitations. Okay. So, we've got most of our normal dirt. Most of our brown stuff. Kind of wanting fencing. Some degree fence could swap out with drywall cracks. So tile swapping. And we're gonna have to but we can kind of have different in a given room have a different tile set to pick from and that may equate to loading different CHR RAM before we 
toggle and then when we scroll the only problem with that is is when we scroll from this room with drywall cracks to this room with fence those tiles are gonna be expected to change some degree we could arrange it so that there is not there the other thing is is maybe as we scroll out the cracks disappear I don't know we quickly exceeding our budget here which kind of expected but my efforts to get every single tile is pretty dumb. Let's save this as a copy. That's why I didn't find the one that we previously had worked on because in GIMP we save things as XCFs. So this is Forsaken Valley. Brick. Dirt. zero file save as so let's just go ahead and get our vines one thing we can do is have our heads up display use a different background tile set because once the PPU gets done drawing the heads up display we with our so we'll have a sprite zero hit to change our scrolly for when we're scrolling between screens but then we also could have a uh, a bank switching of tiles so we'll, we can have as many tiles as we want really in the heads up display and it's completely separate uh, we also that tile set's probably going to include um, include our uh, text boxes so I haven't fully decided how we're going to do text boxes, but kind of my thought is, is that it'll just take up, we'll basically move our split down. I forget exactly how the, I think the original game just plops it in the middle there, but we can consider our heads up display a different palette or a different tile set.
Yeah, these vines, they did a good job of making it look like there's more tiles than there really is. Keep that tile. Grass and fence. Really, it's just one type of grass tile. What's it different? Oh, they got two different grass tiles, and that one just happens to have fence behind it. So let's use this guy. The trees, if we want them green. That's all we really have for green things. Those little guys can actually be in the blue sky palette. But just in case we want them green. Maybe a better thing. Well, what did I say before? So we have the, the book. We said bookcases. I don't know. These could all be extra cracks if we want more of them. Okay, so I think that's all of our green things. So we've got fence pieces yet. I think I'm going to include the fence in some sort of sky. I'm going to need it. This dirt here. I'm just going to go ahead and make the command decision that we don't get that many tiles. Part of me says we could exit through the middle there and have even fewer but that's perfectly good looking block for now now well, you know what so this was we 
we've got a lot more vines, I guess. Because this is the... Uh, the vine grows all different directions. No rotations. Dull hand saying hi, how are we doing? We uh yeah, these vines. So this kind of have a uh, four different corners and then a an up and a down. That I did not realize. Before. But I think that's okay. Let's just move these guys. Over here. So we need a, well, that's got blue background. Do we have this where it's not in the sky? Honestly, I question how much. God, I would even notice. Do we have those vines anywhere else? They're usually on the bottom and we have to hop over them. And then there's some times where they're on the side. Anyway, let's just go ahead and get them from now. Here we got some that are in the black. So this is a top left corner, top right corner. This is a side to side. This is a top right corner. And then we should have a top, I don't know, these are top right and top left. Oh, that is that, right? Yeah. I already got the tops. I need the bottoms. So here's a bottom left. And a bottom right. And then we need a side to side. Oh, we stomped our little tree. So then the, a sideways up and down piece, which would be this guy. Can 
Kind of hard to see that. So many of them look similar. Let's deal with it for now. Messed up that grass. Yeah, I quit. I'm not very good at selecting things here in GIMP. Messing it up. I don't know why it lets you select two things at once, basically. I guess it's because you make a selection and then you're trying to do something within that selection, but I don't. And in, in the escape key, I guess the escape key does undo that. You gotta click in there to tell it to escape that window anyway. So one thing we're missing is these trees. These uh, underground, I guess they're a little more like roots. But do we see roots and sky at the same time? Not really. Be sure to scroll between them, though, but I guess once the sky is out of the background, then we could have the roots fade in. So maybe that's an idea. Tree roots swapping out with sky. Mountains. Also got waterfall and water to fit in. keep stomping my things. We lost our star too. As you zoom in on the thing, somewhere else in the tile set and you're making changes that are off screen of GIMP. Sweet. Get my gaming mouse down here, aka PCB CAD mouse with gaming mouse with a bunch of buttons. It's super convenient to have escape and delete and undo and stuff right on my right thumb be convenient for GIMP also so we got more more trees that we didn't fit in yet I got a small tree a bigger tree Yeah.
some of these cuts may as well happen sooner or rice later. But we're getting an idea of of what we what our budget is. Big brown tree is missing. So I think that covers all of our green. We need our blue sky and mountains. Now this is an actual Easter egg right here. Explore all these areas. I think if this sign right here just says like some acknowledgement to the player for exploring. I don't remember. So, yeah. I think I'm just... Gonna start a new background for the sky. I got these areas, but if we can get our vines, if we can get our green, I think we can get our green pieces to fit in. Two rows. So if we think of things in rows, tile set plan for the background. We've got 16 rows. Which is 4K bytes. Half of one of the two pattern tables. Sprites are a whole nother. Okay, so let's say the heads up display and text boxes get their own tile set. The Forsaken Valley. It has basically four groups. Four palette groups. So Green, I think we can fit in two rows. Two rows of vines, trees, grass. I 
I think it's safe to say we could, well, anyway, it's about two. So, our dirt, our brown, can we fit it in, it's going to take at least four. So our brown, I feel like we can almost fit it in four, but yeah, so something like four to six. Bricks. Yeah, it's just all these details. Parma says keep it to the necessities first and then figure out ways to add in some of these details like the bookcase and stuff like that because it's just so much we can do but so let's say the bricks can fit in four not thinking not with the drywall and the bookshelves and stuff not using up a whole lot for without cracks and bookcases So then we need to figure out what we've got for sky, but I think our brown is going to be closer to six. Let's do this. Save this guy. Taken Valley with books and cracks. Okay. Now let's save it as oh, got an extra X with Sky. Let's rearrange this a bit and just assume we don't have room for all these details. I think maybe this block doesn't appear the same time this block does. So 
Let's just cut this guy out. Let's put this. So I'm trying to fit the trying to fit the bricks into four four rows. Oops. That's pretty much fits in there. We've got some to spare. We've got some extra cracks. Let's just cut these guys out. Let's cut this crack out. This bookcase is not staying for now. <laughs> These tiles are dang near the same. I kind of just want to get rid of them. So we've got a left side, a right side, a cracked, and then a good. This superfluous pixel or so the heck with it. Let's get by without it. Whoops. That moves this guy down here. Oh, you know what though? These little birds face both directions, I think. We need a left one and a right one. can even fit our little okay so this wooden pallet thing walking platform we've got one two three these tiles are dang near the same and these are somewhat similar those yet but those platforms are effectively they swap in and out with the, with a vine palette but they would fit right there you don't really need to be separated by pallets Let's just drop them right there for now. So that fits pretty good. We really don't need 
these different blocks, but. Let's just cut them. If we feel like cutting it. then it's probably a good idea at the moment. If I have a hard time telling the difference zoomed in like this, then uh, people are going to have an even harder time playing it. Got a decent amount of variety. We even have room for a little stool down here. So that's not looking bad. We even have room. Bricks are fitting into four. So we kind of have space here for sky. So let's try to fit some of that in there. See how that tile budget's looking for blue parts. So we've got three main cloud difference. Got a big guy. Oh, you know, I don't have the bridge. That's one thing I missed. This guy right here. Just because of his alignment. He's taking up unnecessary tiles. It's pretty much the same cloud. To some degree, making clouds out of the uh, stealing the front part and the back part of that tile to make a smaller cloud. Quite a bit of options for compression. We can't tell the difference anyway. You just stick it in there for now. Anyway, there's got to be some I mean, I guess I am cutting and pasting to move, but I think I'm missing some shortcut for GIMP there.
So these clouds are the same. Shoot. They're effectively the same palette. I'm not the palette, but they're the same tiles, the same clouds, just with different colors, but that's all the same palette. And so they, uh, that's part of the palette definition. They need to change. And they need to be different, different tiles to be different colors within the same palette. But what's our actual? So we have dark cyan, cyan, and white, and then the black. Now, do we have dark clouds and white clouds visible at the same time? Not so much. So, me says that those are going to be the same tiles, but they're going to have to actually be rewritten. And CHR remedy is different colors. So, light clouds. Swapping out with dark clouds. I'm actually going to, uh, Take a quick bathroom break here. Pause the recording and start it again. All right. And we are back. <clears throat> so the clouds. actually needing a tile swap between the dark and the light area now we have these little weird oh, these things disappear firm says they can be sprites So let's see what the mountains here. What kind of tiles we got. Well, wow. it's a stretch here. <laughs> the 
looks like it covers a fair amount of our tiles. Some of those are white or unused. They can be easily cut. cloud in there. So we've got these little guys. Got a bottom, got a, a hill of trees. So we kind of need a, the mountains kind of stagger on themselves to build. And to fall. I don't know, it's going to be interesting drawing with those. Because can we draw... It's going to be a little tricky, but as far as these trees go, we have... We have flat blocks. Okay, so fat, we got flat ones. And these can be, it doesn't need to be necessarily drawn in a meta tile. It could be drawn here or drawn up one. Kinda. I don't think they did. It'd be interesting to see their their original tile set, but I don't think I really want it because we don't have that kind of budget. But we need to be able to grow upwards and downwards with these trees Snag that one. Offset a little bit there. This 
tile is really not anything. That one's barely something. Let's put our grass. can make these blue or green if we want to add some of our own variants those palette swaps that oh look I got small trees just by using the top of the big one or medium size Yeah, so he's asking how easy it is to use GIMP. Um, it's not that bad, uh, but it takes takes a little bit of getting used to it. There's, I linked in, uh, I hadn't really used GIMP a whole lot. Matej, I'm not going to say his name right. Jan Matej something, Matej, the uh, creator of Um, what's it called Pixel Art Academy or something like that it was a Kickstarter thing a couple years back he has like a quick getting started with using because you can of course do all kinds of things with GIMP but he has a, a quick and dirty 15 minute introduction and I if you look up my stream stream number 3 last week I put in the links that that video that I used to get my GIMP skills that are enough to get me in trouble. So I recommend checking that out to get started with it. Before that, I was just using Microsoft Paint, but the inability to see your grid, having your grid is pretty critical to what we're doing here. And, uh, Paint doesn't have that option. This is one thing that we have is this shadow, but gosh, do we even need it? Forget what those little ball gem thing. Have I considered uh, a sprite? Uh, yes, um, I have. I haven't really. Oh, here it's used as a transition between these two areas. Um, I haven't used it a whole lot, hardly at all, really. I think the thing where, I don't know how you pronounce it exactly, a sprite, a sprite, where it really shines is when you're doing stuff with uh, 
animations of of like your your sprites uh and maybe it's good for background stuff too um when we get into working with the sprites i might be mode but gimp seems to the the main thing i need to do is be able to change the palettes around stuff like that and the the bitmap index indices and uh gimp was pretty good for doing that but certainly heard lots of good things about a sprite gonna have a hard time having grass growing where it's blue I think there just won't be any grass there. They're gonna have it up here. I don't know. It's gonna be a problem. So is that really there? There all there is for sky and mountains. We may find ourselves a little shorthanded for some of these sprites or some of these tiles. Drawing the mountains is probably going to be a bit of a challenge with those tiles, but I'll figure something out. Make some good stamps within uh, tiled. Okay. So we still don't have our fence. That's a somewhat significant one. Excuse me. So I think about our sky here. Our clouds. So I'm going to say that to make small clouds, we could take that tip and this tip. Whoops. That makes kind of a dumb cloud. What about this guy? Dang it. That's kind of dumb too. Anyway, I think if we massage the art a little bit, or maybe take the front tip and the back tip off of small clouds and put them on the medium one part of the issue was just the alignment of that small cloud was I don't know, that looks kind of good. Uh, 
I don't know how badly we need to save two tiles for the clouds. But if we can get by without it now, just make the command decision and go with it. I think we're only going to benefit. That is just one pixel in the corner. Anyway, the sky. How close are we to fitting into two rows? We've got one, two, three, four. Yeah, one, two, three, four. It's not organized that way. But the mountains and the clouds fit into two rows. These trees should fit into one close to it. So we're not doing too bad. I was thinking the sky was going to take up quite a bit, but it's, it's not that bad. Okay, so... Where do we... Wanna go from here, I don't know. Still got quite a bit of Space to work with here. I guess we don't have our, uh, we don't have our fence. Well, I guess there's this knot in the fence. It's just the same as this one. So 
So we've got a horizontal and vertical piece, two different tips, and a knot. And a little traily piece. Yeah, so six tiles, that's not too shabby. Some of these things you think, oh. It's gonna be, this is gonna take a few tiles, or bad at estimating things that you don't think about end up consuming a lot things that you think are going to take some don't actually take that much it's kind of weird how that works I forget that like we've got two different versions of this little bird So there's this big tree. What tile sets are we missing? We don't have all the cracks. The boulder dirt. The boulder dirt. Uh, the big brown tree. The shadow area. We most we got some shadow area. I don't know if we need to shadow from the left and the right. Oh, these tree roots. Don't have them either. There's quite a bit of different. This is like a whole nother. No, the water too. Dang it. These little areas feel like a whole nother tile set almost. Part of me says that the bricks don't need to be available. So this is the back, this is the underground area to some degree. somewhat visible there but it's the amount of bricks in there can be condensed down to you know just those couple repeatable bricks we do have some of them here all these pillars too gosh hmm So 
all these little pebbles or clumps of dirt. Oh, we have low rocks. Oh, and these houses. Some has used the same indoor things. House exterior. This mountains, oh, look at that, they're different. But to some degree, they're the same tiles, but the palette shifted. So that shift that I was talking about doing with the, with the clouds, it's happened with the mountains too. Yeah, man. See, then there's some purple ones, but it's the same tiles. Oh, and there's an even bigger tree. Man. But look, these bouldery brown. It's just a palette shift, and now you've got some, some blue. And same thing with this blue. I forget what this area is called. But that basically is a different tile set. Uh, so I don't know. Part of me says if we can fit it in the same tile set, wouldn't it be grand? and simple. It's going to be less work for ourselves. Let's just look ahead a bit. I really need to know what these areas are called. I don't remember. All right, Google's. some walk through of the different area so this is the I remember this one's the amber sicellum sanctellum I don't know how to pronounce it And this is the tower. But are these 
different tiles. These two look like they're the same. They're just a different palette. So we got the We got the brown, teal, and this other area. It's not the amber saccal, but it's the same tile set. Gray, blue. We have the Forsaken Valley. If we can fit this underground in the same tile set, then, and I mean, it has, if we get into some of these areas, It's got the same things. It's got these vines underground. It's got water. <clears throat> it's got the same ladders. This area up here, this is the final area. The final area looks like it's the same tile set. <laughs> as the am amber saccalum got these the little platforms all the pillars and arches that is is it the same yeah Those little skull dudes on the pillars. Yep, it's the same bricks. <clears throat> so, well, it's interesting. And then we got the this area up here, the useless stone. This is all underground too. They transition in between the yeah so oh and then I forgot the railing write that down there's just a lot of different things in the uh, forsaken valley area I think this is the final area. Oh, I don't remember. Is this the Forbidden Tower, or whatever it is, the same? Some of this stuff it is, but it's got those big bricks, which is not. Not in these areas. Uh, 
but like this bricks are only a handful of tiles, but anyway. So the tower. Orange, purple. Some of these items are repeated though, you know, the ladders. But, hmm. different cloud things. I do not remember. sort of castle area. It's all the windows. Yeah, spikies, different different tile set. This is another one also. Okay, so we're getting towards the end of it then. This is just these two. Some of these things are repeated, but those. They look like different blocks, but they sure are similar to the ones we've been using in the Forsaken Valley. So these two bottom right areas. Are different also. Call it the basement. <clears throat> so we've got a gray green and a gray purple. So to some degree I feel like trying to tackle one of the hardest ones first, but So the below ground has, has a brown and green palette, but then it also swaps for a blue one with the orange spikes. So to some degree it's just those, <clears throat> those vines get swapped out. for some of the starburst pokes. And those spikies down there. So in a way, the
they're different. They really are different tile sets, but not necessarily. So brown, dirt, and vines. And blue dirt and spikes. No matter what, we are going to have to have some sort of transition between the two. But this, I don't think there's any place that we're going to have to transition out of from drywall in this dungeon area straight into the underground. So I feel like those tiles can make a swap. They never need to be on the screen at the same time. The mountains, they kind of do but maybe not so this fencing is only a couple tiles there's no need to swap it so drywall cracks with extra cracks what I think I'm trying to say something else there Maybe the bookcase. Not pimming very well. Okay. Yeah, so I was saying tree root sky mountains, but I think this can be a full on. Maybe, but we get I mean, we kind of condense the drywall down to a single row or so. I don't know that the ladders bolt. Both types of ladders don't show up at the same time, so do we really need them? Probably not. So, Some of these background features I feel like we could have a couple rows that are basically a miscellaneous for something that we want to show on the screen this one time. Like, oh, 
We want to show the sign in the well, or oh, we want to show a building exterior. These wells and building exterior show up at the same time, but or we want to put a big tree. Or we're at a save point, we need some pillars in the fountain. It's just if we... Some of those things clash between scrolls. It's that there's, uh, I don't know, a lot of things coming at the cost of scrolling from one screen to the other instead of Battle Kid style hard page flip. Yeah. Let's just get because what are we missing? So let's list things we might want under. This swappable, miscellaneous swappable tile set. So the bridge, big tree, save fountain maybe. Pillars, bookcases, an extra table and stuff. The uh, if we want some extra cracks, I don't know. It's kind of. I don't like in the sound of this idea. Oh yeah, the the building exteriors. Oh, we don't have our waterfall. We're missing our water. Let's get that. We we gonna need it. Oh gosh! And there's like an animation.
Maybe we'll fire up all real quick just to look at it. Not fire. Oh, Cortana. None of the schemes, it's on my background. Just don't want to. Oh, updating Steam, maybe not. Anyway, we'll just grab a couple pieces of water and uh, figure out some animation. might just be CHR RAM updates Let's give ourselves four tiles to work with. So there's the wavy water, and then uh, we also have waterfall. I don't know that we have this waterfall showing up the same time is the other water I think that stuff actually all animates. Well, I'm, I'm pretty certain of it actually. And there's some waterfall top. Maybe we can just say that we have eight tiles for water. They're going to be likely be a CHR RAM modifications for animation or, or maybe maybe just bank switching with the bank switching we don't really have a limit of how many tiles are in our animation but Let's just uh, budget ourselves eight tiles for water. So we have underground dirt. I would like to fit this dirt. boulder dirt and a relatively small number of tiles mm. they are using quite a few but if we have <clears throat> If 
have a little, all we really need is a square. And we can build anything we want with it. So we need, I did this square. It's a five by five. Five by five is actually pretty liberal. Can do quite a bit with that. Oh gosh, I. messed up my waterfall so Trying to just organize. Things in a somewhat sensible way here. Let's put... This down here. Some of these guys, I think. Maybe in our swappable all set mm. okay so let's look at this though this square brick isn't that basically this front half and that front half if we take this and we put it right there isn't that basically the same thing Yeah. I'm going to say good enough. Dang it. Not control Z. And it's not exactly, of course, but to the untrained eye and someone not doing a, yeah, I think it's good enough. We could massage the art a little bit if we wanted, but we'll keep it as that. Let's move our star over. I 
kind of want to use this little chunk here. Let's do this. Let's keep. I don't even think about how our sign probably uses a lot more tiles than it needs to. Move our well down here. So if the top sign was the same as the bottom sign, who's going to know? That looks like a sign. Yeah, I mean, why not? You can maybe swap around some of the text, but <clears throat> let's just keep one version of the sign for now. Put it down here. Keep this little stand there for now. Well, in that little destructible block, might work for our swappable set. I don't know, some of these we might find collide and don't want them in here, but. Gosh darn it, my caps lock. Okay. So I think we can fit our boulder dirt. Not only have four corners, but it had these little outside inner corners, or whatever we want to call them. That looks good. I think that's perfect. We got a that looks good. Top left corner. Ooh, 
like this. Looks pretty good. I don't think these are exactly right. We're we got some amount of condensing going on here. But Looks pretty good to me. What is this? The type of piece we need to complete it. Okay, so excuse me, we got let's just go ahead and Our little rock for for why not? Okay, so there's a little tile in the middle. The thing that we halfway want. another set of eight tiles or so for these inside corners to join this with this you need that uh, but the thing is it's at no point I wonder if we can somewhat use some of these dirt pieces to do that we can scatter in some of this what if we just had four four little of, of these guys to kind of make our we have the same type of thing with the yeah so that guy The problem is like, oh, this this tile's dang near the same. Can we steal some? Of, I'm just okay. So we'll put them in here. We'll put four of these guys in here to try to cover ourselves for all four corner types. But I halfway wonder if we can just hodgepodge it from this the other dirt. I mean, if we've mostly got them both available to be able to scroll between the two, then... And I, I think we might be able to make it do with some of these, but... Anyway, we'll give ourselves a couple extra tiles to spare. Even though I'm not sure we really need them. And then we need an like like this guy here. so we can piece some things together there. We don't have, we don't have tree roots. 
Those just don't fit. But uh, considered swapping those with like the sky or something. I don't know. Definitely don't need the sky and the tree roots. If you look, when you're scrolling, let's try to zoom in to what's visible at once and then scroll with GIMP. There's a, here we go. So we're a little bit beyond, we're a little bit beyond our screen height and our, it's even compressed further. But let's imagine we're falling down this hole. We've got mountains. And as we scroll down, we have roots. So like right here, we got a mountain visible and we have a root visible. But maybe somehow we can swap those or things are moving if we fade it out or position them well. We've kind of known that we're going to have some, everything's not going to be pixel perfect in between these scrolls and we're just going to be happy with the fact that we kind of still have them to be true to the they're more to be fancy than anything and I think that's going to have to happen we didn't we didn't have uh Mountains are visible with roots to some degree, but not necessarily the clouds. The clouds, clouds are quite a few tiles. My notes are kind of a mess here, but. So it's not in our miscellaneous swappable set, but it's a swap that happens for us to have roots visible in the background. We've got to steal those tiles from the clouds. So. I don't know, it's not, uh, too shabby. So, yeah, this is one thing that's, gonna always be hard to do is, quite a few times that basically you get to the screen and the background is not black. The background is blue. Cyan. I don't think we can afford to, I mean, I guess one idea is just to change the background, but then it's going to like change all the tile sets and it's just going to be a mess. Anyway, we kind of got a nice little Forsaken Valley tile set there. I 
I don't know where the heck we'd fit our miscellaneous swappable. Well, how many spares have we got here? So one, two, three, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve ish, thirteen, fourteen, um, fourteen. Got right close to a row there. This, this this destructible block here is almost a whole row. We might have two rolls worth if two rows worth if uh that destructible block is part of the uh swappable tile set. Yeah, it sounds reasonable. So, let's, I wanted to, I wanted to play around with tiles a little bit. I kind of got familiar with how it works over the weekend. The thing is, is so let's do this. Let's uh, I have my project. What is this about new tile set? Yeah, embed tile set, export as tile set, remove tile set. And we don't really need that. Oh, jeez, that's loud. Hopefully not as loud for you as it is for me. Yes, do it. New tile set. Mm -hmm. We have to uh, export. Save as. or export, export as. So we're in the GIMP folder, Forsaken Valley Sky, PNG, let's, BMP. I think we can do that. Export. Let's uh, kind of just want to see. That in paint quick. Yeah. Okay, so tile set. Mm -hmm. This is something like the uh, Forsaken Valley. Sky. This could be swapped out with Forsaken Valley roots. Based on a tile set image. Yep, source. Gimp, that guy. Transparent color, we don't really have it as far as tile is concerned, and tiles are eight by eight. So we're gonna save this in the tiled folder, Forsaken Valley Sky. That was just my little 
tile set file tsx okay save oh what happened to my okay there we go look at that beautiful beautiful okay and they actually uh nes homebrew pointed out on Facebook the other day when I uploaded my picture that All Was Awakening was actually they they use tiled map editor also um, but I really don't think any of, of the source stuff from tiled because you know they probably had massive tile sets in comparison to how we are trying to condense everything down to one and so this map my idea is basically a map is going to be a uh, a screen um and i think Yeah, width 32, height 26. Cuz the we have we have four the first four tiles being used as the heads up display. Um So, I always get dumb here. So the screen is 240 high divided by 8 equals 30. So there's 30 tiles, but we lose 4 to the heads up display. So that's 26. Yeah, so I set up the, the map to be a a uh, a screen as far as we are are concerned so I'm probably not gonna remember them right now but tiled so stamp so we can make these we could stamp these tiles it also has this so you click shift and then you can click again draw these out Similarly, on top, so we can basically design all of our screens in tiled. We'll use our our import. Our, our in our input to tiled is going to be our our tile set that we create. And then the the export is going to be our screen. Um, that's not what I want to do. So I was just going to make a dummy screen here. 
So we have our the, the thing is is the output of tiled is going to be okay, here's a screen as far as I understand. The first tile is number it's not hovering, I guess doesn't tell me but Anyway, it's going to tell us exactly which tile number it is and that number I think it, it, we can tell it how to go but it it goes in the same in the in the order of, of the NES addressing and uh, and so my plan is is to use that output from tile to draw each screen but if we move around these tiles in the bitmap then all of our screens are broken so we have to redraw them that's why we kind of need a defined tile set these tiles are in this location and and just kind of stick with it um, and previously I was thinking oh we have certain rows for does you know this is impassable this is not and and maybe we still want to think along those lines I kind of have ignored that to some degree um, but we can reorganize these tiles before we get too far um, in, into drawing and redesigning screens but came to the conclusion that for all of its perks, any screen tool for as many screens as we have to design. It's, I mean, it's a screen tool. It's not a. It's it's not well suited, or its strong suit is not drawing maps. But we are going to have to be careful to abide by the. Uh, attribute table restrictions anyway so let's just to kind of wrap things up one thing I haven't done is exporting so what kind of it exports in a CSV JSON Lua JavaScript CSV is probably going to be the most easy to uh, look at. So test 0.csv in the tiled folder. Save that. Let's open it with. I'm just gonna open it with with Vim. Hey, look at that. So, Vim is pretty good at looking at this. Yeah. It kind of looks like our, our ladder. So, so tile 241 is at the top. Oh, here it says tile ID over here. So if I go over here and I click tile ID 241, then 242. Yep, we got some 208s and 209s are our ladder. 208, 209. Yeah. 
so I don't know exactly how we're going to import this into uh, our C project for building the NES ROM. I don't know if CSV is the the best format, but it, gosh, it certainly looks easy to deal with. Um. Anyway, well, that's just something I'll have to figure out. But with a defined tile set, we can start drawing some of these screens, and as long as we don't move their position. I don't, there's one other thing that I was curious about. So custom properties, you can add, I don't know. I don't really know what I'm doing. Well, let's select the tile and then click add. Anyway, I don't know. One thing that we need to try to figure out how to do is 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 the attribute which pal which palette the uh, the tile is using. To some degree, we know we know that based on the tile number. I don't know things to figure out but we made some good progress we're getting close to a defined tile set and uh, with a little more polish on the on the tile set maybe we can start drawing some of these screens and tiled Um, and, and piecing that into it because we were just exporting from any a screen tool but I'd rather figure out how to import from tiled and move forward from there so uh, anyway that's where we got today and uh, yeah Thanks for joining me, guys, and uh, have a good evening, and we'll uh, see you again next week.